Hello everybody, Matt Mon the Frigid Gamer here with another Tinkerer's Construct tutorial, this time with the short bow. We're going to be covering pretty much everything on it except for how to make the arrows. We're going to be covering that in a separate tutorial as the arrows are just as in-depth as the bow is itself. Kind of neat when you really think about it. Pretty impressive with a mod. So, stick around. Alright, the first thing we're going to talk about is actually how to build one of these bows. Um, you don't actually need to know how to uh, how to build the arrows in order to use a sharp bow. Uh, the reason is is the sharp bow will actually work with vanilla Minecraft arrows. They have very similar statistics and stats to the flint er, uh, to the flint built wood shaft feather fletched arrows that you would build in Tinker's Construct. Very similar stats, but you obviously can't modify them, nor can you get them to regen or anything like that. So uh, it's always wiser to build your own Tinker's Construct arrows, but vanilla ones will work. Now, the other thing to note is a short bow only requires a regular tool station. It does not require a tool forge either, making it a lot easier to build. Now, once we're in here, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, some of the stats of our short bow. This short bow is made out of two wooden bow limbs and a bow string, a regular everyday bow string. And that's perfectly fine actually. This thing does a decent amount of damage. And that's the first thing I want to talk about is the damage. Now, you'll notice that it has an arrow speed of 3 and an attack of 3 hearts. The reason for that is that the attack of three hearts comes actually directly from the arrow speed. If I just skip ahead a few pages here... There we go, sharp bows. You'll notice that there's a direct correlation in between the arrow speed and the amount of damage. This one only has an arrow speed of one, therefore it only has an attack of one. The higher the arrow speed, the more damage. But in general, in order to get that really, really high arrow speed, it's going to add to your draw time a lot. Uh, where's a good example here? Actually, you know what? why don't I just build a good... Actually, you know, here's a uh, steel sharp, that's the one I was looking for anyway. Uh, you'll notice here that it has a massive attack speed of 5.5, .5, at least for a short bow. And the attack is 5.5. .5. The way it gets that, as you can see, is it's written in the bottom of the window there. The attack set of this is calculated with the flint arrows that are currently in my inventory. If I were to swap the arrows out for something else, the damage would be different. But it's literally just the attack damage of the arrow you're using multiplied by the speed of the arrow gets your end result. Nice and simple. And I should mention too that this is all done inside FTB Infinity. Uh, that means that anything I do here will be possible inside FTB Infinity. And I will try to mention when things are mod related and when they're not. So I'm going to try to keep this vanilla-ish as possible. But regardless of that, you notice I have a whole bunch of different things here. We're going to actually try, bu try building a bow. Now we saw before here that steel limbs Led to not a bad bow there, a nice 5.5 .5 at arrow attack speed. And actually, the steel bow limb doesn't, uh, is, this is actually the highest damage that I have seen that you can actually get on this thing. And considering that it's actually in Vanilla Tinker's Construct, that's really nice. Uh, without steel, though, we go over to Illumite. Illumite will pretty much be your next highest at 5 hearts, which, yet again, is not that bad. Actually, it's really, really good. But you'll notice that it takes two bow limbs and some bowstring. So let's cover how to make these. So to make these, you'll need a bowstring pattern and a bow limb pattern. That's all you need to make this thing. You'll notice that the costs of these are 1.5 and 3. Bowstring can only be made out of string in vanilla Tinker's Construct, or enchanted fabric if Thaumcraft is installed, or flame string if Natura is installed, and the flame string is dropped from the heat scar spiders in the nether. Dreadful little things. And the bow limb pattern can be made out of any material. As you can see, this is just a sample of the different bows that you can actually make. There's, there's quite a ridiculous amount of them. And those are just straight up type bows. You can start actually mixing materials. It makes some very interesting bows for yourself. Now, since we're using FTB Infinity, we can actually see the stats that each of these adds to what we're making. Like, for instance, the Fiery Bowstring, which is my personal favorite, automatically goes 1.2 times for your arrow speed, which is... That's a lot of freaking arrow speed when you really think about it. Uh, actually, that arrow speed, I believe, will take up the... I uh, will make this thing here deal 5.5... Oh, 6 hearts of damage. So, like, that's, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> uh, that's a very, very reasonable amount of damage. But yes, that's just for starters. And then if we switch over to the enchanted bowstring, you'll see that the damage actually drops to 4.5 because it has a lower... Uh, arrow speed modifier, but also a lower draw speed, so it's kind of like your trade-off. 
Now we can mix and match these parts here as well. I like the fiery bowstring personally. It's like you'll notice the paper bowstring has a draw speed of only 0 0.5 seconds, which is really good. So let's mix alumite and paper. What do we got? 3.5 hearts of damage. Okay. A 1.35 second draw speed. Yet again, eh, because if I remember correctly, the regular wooden one is, yeah, notably better. But if we use something like slime, there we go, 1.8 second draw speed, and 5.5 hearts of damage. So that's pretty bloody good. As opposed to 4.5, 1.6. Yeah, that's a really good draw speed, actually. I might have to make one of those later. So yeah, that's the bow we're going to wind up using here. Alright, so now that we have our bow, we're going to test the distance of 25 blocks. So there's our target there. We're going to, just, we're going to see where it lands if we aim bright in the dead center. At 25, heart, at 25 blocks, it barely has a block of drop, more like half a block. So if I aim just a little bit higher, around there, right inside the bullseye. That's as accurate as you generally need to be. As with any ranged weapon, you can pick up your arrows afterwards, but like I said, we'll be talking about arrows a little bit later. Now we need to get into the brass tacks of things here. Let's get into damage and some modifiers. Okay, so here we are with our test subject, a concussion creeper. They don't, they don't destroy stuff when they explode, but uh, they, they warp you randomly, which can sometimes be just as bad. Now, we saw earlier here that the attack of this thing is marked at, what was it, 5.5 hearts of damage. Let's see if that holds true. Yep, that's 5.5 hearts. Now, the bow when we made it, you'll notice that it had a second stat associated with it. And the reason for that is that this bow, since it's made of alumite and slime, actually has its own damage value as a melee weapon. Which means, I can charge the creeper, knock him back, and quickly draw an arrow, and plink him for the kill. That also leads to some of the interesting modifiers that we can put on top of this bow, and how, the th and how it can work. Now the damage is derived from Alumite having a damage value of 1.5, and Slime having a damage value of 0 0.5. The average of those two is equal to an even 1. So melee attacks with this thing here, deal 1 damage. Alright, so here we go with modifiers for our short bow. Now there's a lot to choose from. Some of them are more effective than others, some of them not so effective. Now, being as this is a weapon and not a tool, first thing we're going to look at though is how many modifiers it has. By default, a short bow will have three modifiers. If it is a part made out of paper or a part made out of thomium from Thomcraft, it'll actually have extra modifiers based on how many parts are made out of it. So right now we have three. You can add extra modifiers to it just like anything else by adding another star or a diamond on a block of gold. You can also add a notch apple and a full block of diamond uh, if you really, really need that many modifiers on this. But for right now, this is where we're going to stick at. Alright. Now, for a, for a weapon, I would actually recommend getting a ball of moss. And the reason is, is that you're not using the weapon consistently, which means you have a pretty good chance of it just repairing on its own. Ball of moss will slowly regenerate its health over time, you can see, still have two modifiers remaining, moss, and does it say what it does? Uh, whoops, I want, there we go. Auto repair, yes. Ball moss adds auto repair. Ball moss's recipe is pretty standard. It's just nine mossy cobblestone or moss brick. In a square like that, it makes one. Pretty easy, especially with these mod packs installed, you can make it pretty easily. Otherwise, if you're on vanilla, you're going to have to find it. Actually, there's a vanilla recipe now, too. I keep on forgetting about that. Anywho, so let's make it. Now, you'll notice that it actually had some damage durability on it. But now, it's fully healed. It'll actually auto-repair faster in sunlight. But for the most part, actually, it's pretty quick in general. As you can see, mostly it'll actually repair pretty quick if you're in good, bright sunlight. Uh, the biggest thing to note is that if you have a really high draw time, Sometimes it'll reset itself while you're pulling it back. And that's the only reason why I'd suggest a hardened flux capacitor over it. Just remember, if you want to add this, you need thermal expansion installed. And the biggest thing to note is that the item that you're wanting to put the flux capacitor on 
has to have a minimum durability of 400. You cannot put it on, say, like a stack of flint arrows that only have 18 durability, technically. Next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to get that we're going to get that nasty, nasty draw speed of 1.8 seconds down. Now you can apply redstone to it to give it haste, which what it'll actually do is reduce the amount of time that it takes for it to draw its bow. It goes in stacks of 50 per modifier. So 50 happens to be 5 dust and 5 blocks. We'll add up to a nice 50. These are interchangeable, you can put them in however you want. You can put 2 blocks in if you want, just to speed up the process of adding it. Alright, back in a second. Alright, and here we go, we're putting on the last of our redstone right now. And you'll notice the draw speed here has gone all the way down to 1.45 seconds. That's pretty freaking good. Now, that did only drop it by about half a second, true. But, that half a second can be the difference in between a creeper blowing up four blocks from you, and a creeper blowing up in you. So, that's pretty good there. Next thing I'm going to talk about here is actually modifying the bow for combat. And like I said, this thing's actually pretty effective in melee. Which is why you can add quartz to it. Quartz will add damage to the bow directly. As you can see, um, if I take that out, right now the bow has an attack of one heart. If I add quartz to it, it'll go up to 1.5. If I go all the way up to 72, it does this. There we go, now that we've added the whole stack, plus a little bit, we've added 72 nether quartz to it, and its attack has gone all the way from 1 to 3 hearts. This bow in melee will do three hearts of damage. But you'll also notice the route of modifiers on it, so we need to add a modifier. But now our bow in melee combat will actually do more damage than a stone sword. So our bow's, our bow's becoming pretty, bo uh, pretty much a boss at this point in time. Now we've added an extra modifier, we have one, le one left. Pistons. Adding a piston to a, a, any item gives it knockback. Keep in mind, this also only affects melee, this does not affect the arrow. Now it takes 10 pistons to max out the knockback on the item. And now that we have that, we have a pretty tricked out freaking bow. Now there's something else that you can add to the bow too. You can add lapis to it to give it luck. But I don't actually recommend doing that on the bow. Because on a bow, in general, you're not going to be running around meleeing people. You're going to be mostly using it to fire off those arrows and kill them at a distance. Lapis would be better off not on the bow. Alright, well let's test this thing's capabilities out. We have it pretty much tricked out. Let's see what she can do. There you go, we've, we've bothered that spider a little bit too much. Two arrows to kill a spider, that ain't bad. I was doing five and a half hearts of damage though, per arrow. So let's just do this. Let's... Let's bug you. Let's see, let's see this knockback in action. If I actually don't miss. Now as you can see, that knockback can send them absolutely flying. And even a spider with their movement speed, you can knock it back far enough to pretty much end them in one hit. Except for that time, there I am wrong. But for the most part, that pretty much ends our tutorial here with regards to the short bow. So you can see we managed to create a very, very powerful bow. Uh, walk through the steps of that, what modifiers are, there are for it, and generally a good way to use it in combat and some neat tricks for it as well. So, thanks for watching. This is Matt Mon cutting out for now. There's more of these definitely to come later, so I definitely hope you do check them out. Subscribe if you enjoyed this, you know, the usual stuff. And have yourselves a good night. Matt Mon out. Deuces.